coming. You know, and I thought, Lord, who is, out of everybody I know who's overcome, Pastor Kenneth has overcome. I mean, he's been, he been shot. He's been in car wrecks, uh, truck wrecks. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's gone through all kinds of troubles. just like, And then just came through a hurricane. Amen. And still overcoming. So I love this man. I thought he's perfect for what we need right now. Would you welcome Pastor Kenneth Smith? Thank you, Chef, man. Let's pray. Lord bless the children. Before we pray, let's get them out of here. Let's pray. Oh, dear Lord, we just love you this day. We just thank you this day that you would just be with us, that you would show us, Lord God, in your word what we need to hear. Lord, I would just pray for myself today, Lord, that I would not come just as some speaker, but Lord, I would come as the same DNA. Lord God, that these people are my family because, because Lord, I thank you this day that we can choose family and we call them friends. So this day, Lord, I love you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. Let your word be alive. Let it be active. Let it be sharper than any two-edged sword. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. amen. Give somebody five and you can be seated this morning. We're going we're gonna to dive in. Where's that guitar at, brother? I was going to show you something. Oh, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I was going to sing a song, but I don't want to show him up too bad there. Ah. Today we're going to talk about thorns, thorns. Tonight we're going to talk about where the rubber meets the road. And I wanted to bring this tire this morning. I wanted to show you that it's never too late for a good year. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about where the rubber meets the road and it's never too late for it to be a good year. If you got your Bibles this morning, let's just go ahead and dive on in. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start reading in verse 7. And as you look and as you, you go there, I just want to say uh, thank you, Pastor Jerry, uh, for being to me over the years a mentor, uh, a voice of reason, a voice of truth, and most especially for being a friend. You know, we did get hit by uh, a storm a few weeks ago. We was out of power for about three weeks. And uh, I'm going to talk about that probably Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to talk about overcoming storms. But I just want to say thank you, Little Country Church, because the day after the storm, your pastor called me and said, what do you need? And uh, I said, Pastor, we, you know... We need some gas. And you know what he did? He showed up with some gas. I said, we need a generator. He showed up with a generator. Then a few days later, they showed up with shingles, sheetrock, sheetrock putty. And uh, Little Country Church, you are a blessing to me. I, you have no idea. So anyway, let's go. Y'all ready? Now we're going to move fast for a little bit, and then we're going to slow down towards the end. Okay? All right. Do y'all re remember the show Back to the Future? Do y'all remember Marty McFly? Do y'all remember what he told Doc? What do you well, whatever you do, Doc, don't go back to 2020. <laughs> uh-huh. 2020. How did 2020 start? Well, it started with impeachment. Come on. It started with impeachment. We went from impeachment to Wuhan COVID virus. A.K.A. the China virus. We went from there to the economy crashing. And it's amazing to me how the very folks that say stay home and don't work, or they never miss a paycheck. Uh, hello. Then we moved from riots. We moved to looters. And, and, and now the president himself has got this mess. But I tell you what, I still love this country. Amen. You know, we've had an opportunity, we've had a chance to see just how fragile life and liberty can be. Just how fragile life and liberty can be. Pastor Jerry told me one time 
And uh, it's the only thing he ever told me that I didn't already know. Uh, he told me that fear and faith are both invisible. He said one of them searches for hope, the other searches for the worst. See, we have a news media right now that sells fear for profit. They sell fear for profit for profit, and to further their social agenda. We have the Centers for Disease Control, which sells fear for prestige. We have the World Health Organization, which sells fear to advance the goals of communist China. Are we all right? We have a government that sells fear for control. See, because they want to control us because they want us to be subjects and not citizens. See, Jesus does not sell us anything. Everybody else wants to sell you something. Let me give you this for a good deal. A good deal. Jesus didn't sell us anything, but he gave us everything. See, he gave us faith, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He gives us hope. He gives us courage. He gives us salvation. He gives us victory. And he gives us help in a very present time of need. See, he don't sell us anything, but he gives us everything. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us power and love and a sound mind. He did not give us deception and lies to push an agenda, but he has given us truth. And truth is what will always set us free. So today we're going to talk about truth when it comes to overcoming 2020. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And this is Paul. He says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than the power of Christ, uh, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So you got thorns. Where I was raised at, you called them briars. <laughs> briars, son. This come off of a blackberry briar. And we used to pick those blackberries when I was a kid. We'd take empty milk jugs. We'd go pick them. And we'd sell a whole milk jug of blackberries for a dollar. Say, my goodness, son, when was you born? 19 and 1? Something like that, 1901 maybe. But see, I cannot, I cannot even begin to tell you how many times I've been stuck by blackberry briars. Blackberry briars, say that fast three times. And what happens when you get stuck by a blackberry briar, it pricks your skin. And you have to get it out, and if you don't get it out, it causes an infection. I was on an elk hunting trip here a while back, and, and uh, I got a, a cactus thorn through my boot and in my foot. So I tried to pull it out without taking my boots off, and I broke it off. Well, I was up in a place, and, and I was looking for an elk, and I said, well, I'll just deal with it. How many of you know it's hard to deal with a thorn in your foot? You try to press through, you try to push on, but sooner or later, you've got to reach down, and you've got to get that thing out. Because if you don't, it begins to consume you, and that's all you think about. And what happens is we become so preoccupied by the thorn and by the prick in our skin that we forget that God has a promise for us, that God has a plan for us, and that God has a purpose for us. So I want to ask you today, are you preoccupied? Preoccupied by what? Things like politicians. Professing to be wise, they became fools. See, you got the news media. You know, I, I, I think I had my, my daughter, she's a, a, a junior in college right now, and she was asking me a question about the Tower of Babel here a while back, and I was trying to walk her through it, and I, I, I got this, this epiphany. See, politicians, the news media, we all speak English. But can I tell you something? I don't understand their language. Hello, somebody. 
See, I, I might speak the same dialect as them, but when they go to telling me that it's okay to kill a child in the womb, I don't get that. I don't understand it. When they go to tell me it's fine for two men to lay together, I can't understand that. I just can't, I can't get there. I can't get it. You got looters, you got rioters, you got troublemakers, you got ignorant people who won't shut up. Did you know the word ignorance comes from the word ignore? They ignorant because they ignore everybody else. We all right, Pastor Jerry? Okay. See, thorns in my flesh are people who have never suffered anything for freedom, but love to enjoy that freedom to burn flags and spew hatred. Now today, real quickly, I want to throw a little American history at you. Anybody ever hear the Mayflower Compact? November 11, 1620, William Bradford said this, By the grace of God, I have an undertaking for the glory of God in the advancement of the Christian faith and honor of our king and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. The Mayflower Compact was a precursor to our Constitution. Let's look at our amendment, which comes from our Constitution. Amendment number one, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Now you see, this First Amendment, whether you realize it or not, was somewhat challenged this year. All over this country, governors, uh, people in the government were saying, you can't have church. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, what are we going to do? Pastor Jerry said, I don't know what everybody else is going to do. I'm going to have church. Amen. Give your pastor a hand. See, he saw this as an opportunity. And I told Sandy, when all this started, she said, what do you think Brother Jerry is going to do at the little country church? I said, he's going to see it as an opportunity. He's going to come up with something absolutely incredible. And when he gets through, they'll be in better shape when it's over than they are right now. That's called godly leadership. That's called taking the bull by the horns and running with it. But see, then you got the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the, for the, to the security for a free state. The right of the people to keep and to bear arms shall not be infringed. Liberals want to take the Second Amendment so they can rob you of the First Amendment. So we cannot give up the Second Amendment if we want to keep the First Amendment. Come on, we're rocking on now. We're talking about 2020. See, I had an old 77, 77 Chevrolet one time. And I got off uh, for Christmas. I had four days off. The first day off, I was headed over to my mom-in-law and my pa-in-laws. And that thing had a set of duels on it. Oh, Lord, that thing sounded good. At 350, I started down that road. I hung it to it just so I could hear those pipes. And when I, I got to hearing a knock, pop, 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 pop. And I said, oh, no, I done slung a rod. So I pulled up my pawn-in-law in my laws yard. He was just knocking. I got out, raised the hood. I said, yep, that's a rod. I killed it. Had a buddy of mine worked at Napa. I called him. I said, hey, man, I need stuff to rebuild my engine. So I shot up to, to Napa and to Ritter. I got stuff to rebuild my engine. I got it. And I spent the whole Christmas time that I had off rebuilding that old 350 engine. I put it all back together. I fired it up. And you know what it did? Knocked it. Knock, 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 knock. So, oh, Lord. I told Sandy, my wife, I said, I'm taking her to the house and I'm going to try to blow her in half before I get there. Son, I hung it to that old truck down the dirt roads over the creek, around the curb, and I'm hanging around and pipes screaming. I pull up to the house. I still got good oil pressure and it's still going knock, 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 knock. So I raised that hood up. I said, as hard as I just pushed that thing, surely... It would have thrown something loose. So I took it, uh, I got this trick my old daddy taught me. I found me a piece of water hose about that long. I put it up next to my ear and I just went over that motor like that and started listening for that knock. And when I got to the alternator, 
Anybody ever heard an alternator knock before? I hadn't. So I changed that alternator. And that thing run perfect. Wasn't knocking anymore. You see, what happens is we want to solve the problem when we don't even know what the problem is. We, we, we get a hold of something and we automatically assume and we want to run with it. You see, and that's what we see now going on in 2020. People have no idea what to do about this virus. The officials have no idea what to do about this virus. So what people want to do is try to clamp down, try to take away our rights, try to move us to a place where we cannot do anything. See, people want us to live lives that are not dangerous. What I do for fun is always dangerous. I like to go climb mountains and try to shoot an elk with a bow. I like to get on Harleys and ride down the road. I used to run dirt track cars. Anyway, I, let me get back to where we're going here. I did, a, I did a search on the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Listen to these, just a few real quick. Samuel Adams, not the beer guy. He says, I recommend my soul to the Almighty Being who gave it in my body. I commit to the dust relying upon the merits of Jesus Christ for a pardon of all my sins. Charles Carroll, signer of the Declaration of Independence. On the mercy of my Redeemer, I rely my salvation on His merits, not on the works I have done in obedience to His precepts. Patrick Henry, signer, governor of Virginia, a patriot. This is all the inheritance I can give to my dear family. The religion of Christ can give them one which will make them rich indeed. Robert Treat Payne, signer of the Declaration of Independence. I desire to bless and praise the name of God Most High for appointing me uh, my birth in a land of gospel light where the glorious tidings of a Savior and of pardon of salvation through Him being continually sounding in my ears. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. These are the men who, who risk everything, their lives, their fortune, to set in place what we have now. And I can tell you, my heart sometimes is concerned because all it would take is for one generation. For us to lose one generation. And then we would lose what we have, what we have taken for granted the last 200 years. See, if you, if you really dig history, you find some cool things. How about preachers? How about preachers in history? See, I believe that it was the patriot pulpit that delivered America from the bondage of, of slavery and, and being subjects to, to Great Britain. It was the preachers that led the charge. See, it's the timid pulpit of today that does not want to offend, even if it costs the truth, that is helping to deliver America to the brink of destruction and judgment. We've got to see men of God be men of God and daughters of faith be daughters of faith. Amen. Amen. I see Pastor Jerry, and if you don't want to know the truth, don't ask him. If you don't want to know what's right and what's wrong, don't ask him. If you don't want to hear the truth in church, anybody ever hear Jonas Clark? Nope. Some of you. Anybody ever hear the Minutemen? You remember, you ever hear the shot fired at Concord, the very one that started the American Revolution? Jonas Clark was a Minuteman. Do you know what else he was? He was a pastor of a church. When they heard that the British were coming, do you know who he mobilized? His church members. And his church members marched out to Concord and they faced up against the greatest army the world had ever known at the time. The shot heard round the world came from a preacher in his church. Peter Mullenberg, he preached a sermon about liberty and about being set free from the tyranny of King George. Peter Mullenberg, when he finished his sermon, he took off his clerical robe and he marched to meet George Washington with 300 men from his church. See, Pastor Jerry wouldn't have to take off his clerical robe because he wears his fighting clothes all the time. You know it. You know it. 
How about James Caldwell? He took the hymnals from his church and he used to, them as musket wadding for the Battle of Elizabeth in New Jersey. And as they fired, he hollered, give them Watts, boys, because the man who had wrote the hymnals' names was Watts. Come on. <laughs> Do you know what happened to him and his family? The British burned his church and they executed his wife. See, when it comes to what we have, what are we willing to pay to keep it? See, I want to ask you a question today. Have we been so preoccupied by the pain of the thorns and the pricks of the thorns that we forgot what it's, what it, what it's like to be an overcomer? Jesus said in John 16 and 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He said, you're going to have trouble on this earth. He said, but be of good cheer, because if you stick with me, we're going to make it. There's, there's some guys that, that uh, uh, Shemua, uh, Shaphat, Egal, Pout, uh, Gadiel, Gadi, uh, Amiel, Sethor, uh, Nabi, and I think it's G-E-U-E-L, Jewel. These guys were awesome men. They were awesome. You can read about them in the Bible. You know what? When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, do you know where they were? Right with Moses, son, walking. When they got to the, to, the, uh, to the Red Sea and Moses stuck out his stick and the, and the Red Sea parted, do you know where they were? They were right there walking across with him. Man, they were marching, seeing the fish swim by. When they fought Amalek at Rephidim, do you know where they were at? Right in the heat of the battle, baby. They saw Moses bring the Ten Commandments into camp. They were chosen above the rest. It says in Numbers 13 and 3 that all of them, all of them were heads of the children of Israel. Well, how come we don't ever hear about them? Who are these guys? You remember the 12 spies? These guys had great victory and had walked in great victory, seen great, great things happen time and time and time and time and time again. But when it got to the place where they needed to go and do something a little bit deeper, they just couldn't see it. See, thank God that we win battles yesterday, that we won battles the day before that. But we need people who will fight the battles today. We need people who will stand up and say, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day I'm going to fight. Praise God for my testimony because my testimony gives me courage to fight the battle today. See, we don't, we don't remember these ten guys, although they've done great things. But we do remember Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because they were overcomers. They were overcomers. Real quickly, what did they overcome? They overcame the doubt of others. The others said, hey, it ain't going to work. And they said, yes, it is going to work. They overcame the scorn of others. Can you imagine what everybody said? Did you see Joshua and Caleb? Your baby sucking up to Moses. It was impossible. But they said, no, Moses, we can do it. How about they overcame the wilderness of others? See, when they didn't go into the promised land, they had to march around in the wilderness for a long, long time. See, Joshua and Caleb didn't get to go immediately into the promised land. They had to walk around in the wilderness too in the desert. You ever had to walk around in a wilderness you didn't create? I have. See, it would have been easy. To have begun to blame and say, God, I knew we could do it. Why am I out here? God, I knew we could do it. Why am I walking in the sand and it's hot and the wind's blowing and there ain't no shade and I'm having to eat manna and all these things going on and the donkeys stink and the camels stink and I, I could just be in the promised land. But no, I'm out here walking in a wilderness that I shouldn't even be in because it ain't even my fault. It ain't even my fault while I'm here. But see, in order to be an overcomer, 
you got to overcome the greatest enemy of all. Yourself. Especially when you're walking in somebody else's wilderness. The word overcome means to carry on through despite hardships to last to suffer without yielding. Overcoming is the willingness to remove the word quit from your vocabulary. Truth's about quitting. First one is you always have an opportunity to quit. If you have a plan B, it better be a good one because you'll probably use it. The second thing about quitting is we've all thought about it from time to time. Quitting is the easy thing to do. Quitting can become a habit. Now this is key right here, what I'm about to tell you. There's a big difference between quitting something and killing it. You may explain that a little bit. There's a big difference between quitting something and killing it. Let me think of a good example. You ever been to a church where there was, make sure there ain't no old organ up here where I don't offend nobody. You ever been to a church where there's no organ up there and you've been going there for three years and nobody's ever played that old organ? But it keeps sitting there and they'll change the bouquet on it every now and then? Do you know why it's there? Because in 1962, Aunt Mamie gave that to the church and they're afraid to take it out because the family might get mad. That thing is dead. Quit beating on it. Get rid of it. But see, we don't get rid of it because our churches become museums. And we begin to focus more on what used to be than what's going to be. Amen. If it if it's needs killing, kill it. In Hebrews chapter 12, he says that we got to run a race and we got to endure. See, how you finish is more important than how you start. I started bad. I started in a, a, a rough family, man. I'm telling you, my bunch was rough. My bunch was, was hard. Uh, the ones that didn't make whiskey sold weed, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was a lifestyle that I had to break free from. Yeah. A lot of people have initiative, but only a few people have initiative. Everybody got that? <clears throat> Finitive, the ability to finish. People who truly overcome are rare. Matthew 7, 13, he tells us that the gate is narrow, and those who find it are few. You know what the thing about rare is? It's willing to bleed. Somebody think about a steak right now. People who overcome are exceptional. Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, Come after me, deny yourself, and take up your cross. When you deny the lust of the flesh, you become an exception to the rule. People who overcome are teachable. Matthew, uh, Psalms 25, He says, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. People who are overcomers are blessed. See, our endurance that we learn from overcoming will enable us to experience the power of the promise. People who are overcomers win every time. Philippians 1.20 Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, in closing, I, I want to say it's been many, many, many years ago now. I had a friend that, uh, He, he found himself in a desert place that really wasn't of his making. And he kind of dropped off the map on me, but I hunted him down because he was my friend. And when I found Pastor Jerry, I said, Pastor, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And I give God praise. I give God praise at the fruit that I see here, Pastor Jerry. 
you're a man of God and I love you. You're the best friend I have. And if anybody wants to throw down over him, you just let me know. Because I'll fight with you. I'll fight over you, brother. Won't you stand with me this morning? Stretch your hands towards your pastor this morning. Lord, we thank you for this man of God who's always ready, who never runs from the fight, but always runs to the fight. Who when those who gave up on him, counted him down, counted him out, something rose up inside of him that said, do not rejoice over me, my enemy, if I fall, for I shall arise. And yea, though I sit in darkness, the Lord is a light unto me. I thank you for the light that's in this man. I thank you for the innovation that you've given this man. I thank you for the desire to see lives changed that you've given this man. I thank you for the vision for Little Country Church that you've given this man. I thank you, Lord, that people will remember him. Not because of the battle that he won yesterday, but because of the battles he's going to win today. Lord, I pray for the little country church. I thank you for the opportunity this week to be here. I pray, Lord God, that as we come together time and time again, that we would feel your power, that we would be set free, that we would be delivered. We love you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody said amen. Rubber meets the road. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I mentioned tonight. Tonight is in New Caney. Let me make sure I mention that because I, I made it sound like it was going to be here. But tonight we'll be in New Caney and then back here on Tuesday night. And then when, this is the best preaching I've heard in years. I mean. Truth, truth be told, the, some of the best preachers, I'm not, I'm over my preaching, all the other preachers are, Frank, we need this. This is good, man. This is just good word, straight. We need something to shake us like this. Amen. And, uh, you know, and I'm just going to tell you guys, that you, I appreciate being your pastor. But I, you know, when you talk about, I thought to myself, never mind, I won't, I can't. No, I'm just serious. I, I'm just, I, I just want to be a man. I just want to be among you. I want to be your brother. I'm, I'm honored to be your pastor. I feel like God has uh, given me a second chance. You know, take, I've taken advantage of it. We've had our thorns. Everybody got a thorn. You know that? Don't look around. Look straight ahead. Everybody got thorns. Everybody deals with thorns. Everybody, they, this, and, and Paul said it. It's a messenger of Satan who came to buffet me. Last week I mentioned to you that Paul would not compare himself to others. That those who compare himself to others are not wise. But that Paul was probably a short man, bald, pudgy, and had a bad eyesight. And yet he was a giant. He's a giant in, in biblical knowledge and understanding and passion. But, bro, you, you made me want to go get my gun, get everybody in the house, and let's go find somebody, a war out there. You know what I mean? Just, but there's always a war. The Scripture says we fight not against flesh and blood. Right. But against principalities, powers, and wickedness in high places. Sometimes we got to remind ourselves as a devil that hates us and hates your family. Amen. If he can't get to you, he'll get to the apple of your eye. So pray for one another. And then I'm just, the nuggets just kept falling. I've never heard you preach so good. I didn't know you were this good. Did, I did not know it. I did not know. But, 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 the, the, but, but he's, he's telling the truth. Governments, all governments eventually want to make you a subject. All governments do. It's just, it's in their nature. It's, it, it, it came out of, out of uh, Rome. It's that same thing. They just want to make you subjects. Instead of, you got to fight for your citizenship. You got to fight for your freedom. Amen. You got to stand on what you believe. Now listen, you've got an uh, offering envelope there in front of you. Amen. You also have some new cards, I'm sure, in front of you about, I don't know if, which one you've got, uh, maybe the one about the website, and then four, uh, four ways that you can give. Amen. These were made up this week. Uh, these in, the, in your pew in front. 
I mean, you just look at it. You put it back if you want. You can keep it if you like. It also says, as we give today. But this is important. Uh, again, last week was, was a hard financial hit. It always is on Muscle Car Sunday because either people are not in church or regularly there, or people are working and doing things all over the place. Your faithfulness in giving is what keeps this thing moving. Amen. Not only that, you honor God with your giving. If you have faith, you, but David Huff said, are you saved? And y'all yelled, yeah! Yeah! You say, because you're saved by faith. And you also give by faith. If you don't, you just don't give a dime. And if you don't give a dime on a dollar, you'll never give any more than that. So learn how to give a dime. Can I get an amen? Amen. So we've got the envelope in front of you. Our, our guys will be in the back after we decree this, and David will come up and pray. So the announcements are pretty simple. You'll see them on the overhead. We have the, uh, the uh, clothing ministry open. Uh, the pantry is going to be open today. Amen. But tonight is so important. 7 o'clock in New Caney. Everybody say New Caney. So you have to come. For this to be a success, for you to hear this one message on this flat tire or a good year, after what you heard this morning, you hear David Huff, you got you to gotta show up tonight. Amen. You can't just sit home. I know you're not watching football because I'm not. I gave it up. I watch college ball, but I ain't watching pro. Just can't do it. Amen. Got to make a stand somewhere here. Just, I watch basketball, you know, a NASCAR. You know, rodeo is about the only thing out there that even looks like America anymore. Amen. So that, that's something that I'm, I'm into. So come tonight and eat with us afterward. So it's going to be a good thing. Amen. A uh, few of us, I think after service, no, next week, swap. It's going to be meeting next Sunday. Amen. Seniors with a purpose. Amen. Lift Bible study on the 18th. Amen. Ladies, you're having a retreat on November the 20th and 21st. Two days. So men, we'll take care of the, of the kids and all that and let the ladies have a great. It's called the Cozy Mountain Lodge. It has a nice name to it, don't it? It's going to be an amazing thing for the ladies. It's going to be out at the ranch, so uh, make sure you get ready to sign up for that. And there will be a trunk or treat here on the property on the 31st, here at our Crosby campus on the 31st. Is that right? Is that see? No, it shouldn't be New Caney. Go back. Back up that one. It says New Caney. Well, we're going to take that off. By next week, that's going to be gone. D, it's going to be gone. We'll take it off. Yeah, well, I wanted it here anyway. Yeah, I wanted it to be over here. I thought it was a great success last year. Amen. So we'll do it again. So come on up. As we give today, we believe in God for? Come on, say it. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Oh, there's some David Huff CDs in the back. Looks like they're going to be selling them. Is that you? Yep. Right there in the back. She's waving at you. Um, yes, on Tuesday night. You want to say anything about that, Miss Val? So pre-packaged, anything that can fit into a, a Ziploc baggie, basically. We're trying to be mindful of, of the things that are going on, and so that's what we're doing That is, is we're just going to uh, go ahead and, and be mindful of the situation, and we're going to make sure everything is pre-packaged. So if you guys can do that for us, cookies, brownies, uh, any, anything that can be self-serve, okay? Uh, we're good. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I'm grateful for the fact that we get to celebrate 17 years. So many churches are closing down right now. And I just pray over the little country church that we're not closing, but we are moving ahead full steam, Lord. And that, Lord, there is a destiny and mandate on this house to reach out. So we continue to reach out. And Lord, we are overcomers. Lord, we have an example of an overcomer in our pastor. And so we shall be. And I just thank you for the example 
example you've given us. I thank you for the men that came to give their gifts with us. I'm just so thankful and so grateful, Lord. Let us have a blessed week. Let us to make these services that our mindsets would change, that our hearts would be renewed and would be lit on fire for you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs>